the, the long the debate. debate. The yeah. debate. We're, in this video, we're going to reference basically swapping a, what's the better swap, 1AT or VR6. And when we're talking about swaps, in this specific case, we're really focusing on Mark 1, Mark 2, and Mark 3. Because those are the older chassis, lots of guys are swapping engines into them, and we want to just kind of discuss what you guys may think is the better swap and what we kind of, we're going to lay some pros and cons of each um, and uh, give us, give you guys our opinion. So this, this video, the reason we come up with this video, it kind of was sparked by Ryan's video on Mystery Garage. We'll put his link down below. He does a lot of older Volkswagen engine swaps and stuff. And the reason it came about is a clip that he has in his video. Maybe we'll add it in here. People talk about weight distribution and all power to weight ratio isn't as good as like a 180 or something. It's really hard to compare the torque and the sound of a VR6 when it comes to, you know, to bottom end torque and just the looking front of a VR6, it's hard to beat. The reason that sparked the, the video is because between Clayton, Robbie, myself, we've had lots of engine swapped early model cars or maybe not lots but definitely a few and i've done lots so this video is not going to be biased based on one having one or the other a lot of guys just choose what engine that they think is best but they've never really experienced both sides of things clayton has owned r32 as you vote as you guys would know i've owned 12 or uh, 24 valve vr6 robbie's owned 12 valve vr6s 3.2 VR6 now. We've boosted them pretty much all of them. Um, so we have lots of experience with VRs and lots of experience with 1ATs. We're going to talk about the pros and cons to both the VR6 swap and the 1AT swap. And I'm going to get into some of the reasons why maybe I would choose or maybe even Clayton. Clayton and I actually haven't even discussed what he would prefer versus what I would prefer. Mm -hmm. But We'll get into some of the myths and stuff towards the end, but some of the pros for the VR. Clayton, the first one. Sound. Sound. Sounds you cannot awesome. beat the sound of a 12 valve VR6. The 3.2 and the 3.6 both sound amazing as well, but the, the 12 valve is definitely very infamous sounding. Um, what VR do you think? The R32 too. Does it sound better or worse? Does the 12 valve sound better or worse than the 3.2? We'll get lots of comments about this, I'm sure. I don't I think the R32 sounds awesome. But the 12 valve, it, it, does, it does sound, sound pretty really good, man. I think the 12 valve sounds better than the, the 2.8 24 valve. I don't know. It is a V6. So for an older car, like especially a Mark 1, being a, such a small chassis, to have a six cylinder under the hood, it's definitely impressive to non Volkswagen people that would have no clue that you could jam a six cylinder in those cars. NA power, we're going to talk about the power stuff a little bit later, but you know, the VR does give good linear power, so it, you know, opposed to a turbo coming on harder and stuff like that, but that kind of is a pro and a con in my opinion. We'll touch on that later. Cleaner all around swap for sure. Yeah. 1AT has so many vacuum lines and all that stuff, which can definitely be deleted, but overall, with the charge piping and all the uh, all the intercooler all that stuff the vr definitely is a complete package that is definitely a lot cleaner looking swap in my opinion again this is basically mine and clayton's opinion you guys are going to have your own but we've done lots of these swaps so it's good to note stronger engine right yeah, arguably yeah the raw like i mean they can make a lot of power with a head like if you go further with these things and do a head spacer motor you can make a lot of horsepower on a stock vr6 engine you can buy the vr6 in a mark 3 so if you're sm if you're doing a swap from into a mark 2 for example and you bought a mark 3 it's going to be easy you're every you're going to have literally everything to swap it into your car so that's going to make it easier the 180 didn't come in anything older like that so not quite as simple as a swap but still pretty simple once we get to the pros of the 180. Mm -hmm. do you remember the first one we had on the list mm -hmm. no i forget Turbo sounds. Oh yeah. Wishy wishy wishy. Yeah. yeah. They are more tuner friendly. So there's like, when it comes to the 12 valve VR6 specifically, or even the other VRs really, there's not a lot of options for tuners out there to be able to tune those. There's definitely some known ones, but when it comes to 180s, 
man, there's a zillion people tuning those things. Easier to get. They came in a lot of cars and up until, when did they stop putting 2004, 2005? Yeah. And really the blocks and heads are interchangeable. A lot of that stuff's and... interchangeable. So 180 is definitely gonna be a little more easier to get. I would say the reason you see a lot more 3.2 and 3.6 swaps nowadays is not because they're a little bit cooler and make more horsepower, is because the 12 valves are getting harder and harder to find. Potentially lighter, that's gonna be an ongoing yeah. argument between VRs and 180s. I but would definitely say- Definitely where the weight sits is the, the big one. Yeah, 100% where the weight sits is gonna be the big difference there. I would say 180 with the intercooler and the charge piping and all the stuff versus the weight of a VR, they're probably gonna be way very similar, turbo, intercooler and stuff like that to compare them. Where the weight is on the VR, in front of the axles on those older chassis is definitely going to, in my opinion, make them handle not quite as good as what a 1AT would be in the car. And known fact, Clayton was gonna put a VR in his Mark I. Mm, I'll put a picture of that in. I actually had the engine in. You did? Yep. What a terrible idea. Terrible idea for what he was doing with that yeah, car. Yeah, as a cruiser, awesome. Yeah, for sure. Better fuel economy, I guess, as a 1AT compared to a VR. Yeah. I mean, gas is getting crazy the prices so I guess you're gonna get a little bit more value in your fuel usage. It is a timing belt engine versus chains. A lot easier to do the timing on a 1AT than it is on a VR. Modifying it there's endless things you can do to a 1AT for and, modifications. And that, for multiple different prices too like you know you, you can buy you can little buy things cheap, put on. Yeah, you can diverter expensive. valve, little things like that to upgrade and help the performance a little bit, intake pieces and stuff and you can do some of that stuff to a VR but there's definitely going to be more bolt-on options that have a very wide range of pricing, like cheap to expensive. Oh, I would say it's probably an easier swap in most of the chassis for the sheer fact that you could technically use your four-cylinder 1AT transmission that came in your Mark 1, 2, or 3. It could be easier and more convenient. Cheaper? Mm, could be. No matter what you do on the Mark 1 and 2 platform, you need to buy a transmission yeah, as well. Leave, let's leave it at this. You have a lot more tranny options. Yeah. You Ooh, have to buy, like I said, you have to buy a transmission if you're doing a VR6 swap in a Mark 1 or 2. Yep. You don't have to do that in a Mark or with a 1AT. So let's get to the con. What's your number one con with a VR? Arguably where the weight sits and how it is hindering handling, let's say. We could test it sometime, I guess, but. How are we gonna do that? We're gonna put a VR in your 180? That's not. <laughs> we got lots we got of time. We got other stuff to do. So much time. The VR is harder to get now. Oh, yeah. I think I said that already, but yep. they're definitely harder to get. Timing chain, definitely more costly to do the chains on a VR or and do the, the timing on a VR. Take the whole engine out in order to do it, or yes. at least take the tranny off. If you're doing it before the swap, then great, but it's still a maintenance thing that is more expensive than timing a 1AT. You do require axles and mounts and transmission, like I mentioned, in most of the chassis if you're swapping them into an older car. Again, with the 1AT stuff, you can use a lot of that stuff. It's not the greatest, and you probably should upgrade to an O2A or an O2J, but it can be done with the older transmission. Ooh, on the Mark II, the VR, mm -hmm. what do you gotta do? Smash the frame rail in. Yeah. Modify the frame rail. Obviously on the 180, you don't need to do that to any of the chassis. They just fit. I guess that's definitely a con, depending mm. on what you think of your car. And unless you want to take some anger on it. Yeah, unless you want to take anger. They flip over in the ch early chassis. <laughs> it's a joke for the people yeah. on the old Vortex days. They do have pretty junky pistons in them when you get into doing like a boosted application. Mm -hmm. but um, the rods are really strong and again guys have made lots of horsepower even on stock pistons as well but they're a little more known to have more fragile pistons okay, okay so the pros no we're the doing cons. the cons now the cons, the this cons. video is so scattered last minute trying to film video it you or you maybe me yeah so the cons although 180s never lose according to the internet sometimes they do lose also, it's just a four-cylinder, not a six-cylinder. I mean, that in itself definitely sounds cooler to say you have a six-cylinder, but to some people, as opposed yeah, to a four-cylinder. What do all the old dumb guys say? There's no displacement, no, no replacement for displacement? Yeah, that's yeah. what they do say, but yeah. boy, they've been proven wrong over the last <laughs> few years. The stock manifold, if you're buying a used 180, which obviously this would be coming out of usually a salvage vehicle or something like that, 
the manifolds and turbos now are pretty junky. Most of them are cracked, the manifolds are. That's one of the things to look out for when purchasing a, a 1AT stuff. I guess and if you're purchasing like an older 1AT, like a, out of a Passat, like an AEB, you need a different intake manifold. There are definitely things in regards to turbo location and downpipe and all that stuff and intake manifold, intake, that can all impact how that fits in. Intercooler requirement. With the VR, you just put it in, put an intake on it, you're good. With a 1AT, you definitely got to do all the intercooler charge piping. There are no kits, to my knowledge, out there for a, an intercooler and piping for a Mark 1, 2, or 3. I'm sure somebody makes I don't know, man. But I don't think. No, somebody has to. Honestly, I'm being honest. Mm -hmm. Being honest. Like, you can't buy a... You can't buy a intercooler kit for a 24 valve vr6 drop in the comments below if you somebody offers a kit for that. somebody offers a kit that you mm. know of okay do it because i'd be curious to know so rods in the 1at <laughs> they're junk you can make like 300 ish wheel i know guys have made more on stock rods stuff like that but on junky fuel small turbos big turbo spikes all that stuff they don't really like that too much they do have a limitation where the vr rods are definitely going to take you for a long road down the horsepower path. As we talked about already, the EVAP, secondary air, all that stuff is very cluttery in a 1AT and it can be all deleted, but it is just additional things that you gotta do to make it a little bit cleaner in the car. Oh, and now we're gonna talk about power delivery. What first, sparked it? First thing we should t talk about okay. is the known thing where everyone's like, the VR, you can't beat the torque. Yeah, so that's what kind of sparked this idea to do this video is we obviously have dynoed a lot of cars and we get to see and we've done lots of 1AT swaps and VR6 swaps and stuff like that and we've driven all of them but we get to see the difference on the in the actual data on the dyno of how these cars are. You telling me the butt dyno lies? It's lying in this case. We have two cars here. Both of these, full disclosure, are tuned vehicles running 91 octane. 12 valve VR6, tuned. 1AT, 20 valve, tuned. Stock, basically stock, maybe an intake on both, I believe. But both of these are basically stock kind of applications with the tune. Before we get into the power part of it, tell me what your ideal swap is down below. Anything? No, I'm gonna say in regards to VR6 or, or 1AT. And yes, the 3.2 and the 24 valve and the 3.6 are all gonna be greater horsepower stuff, but the common swap for a very long time was a 12 valve VR6 versus the 1AT, right? Right. So tell us below what your ideal swap would be, and now we're gonna talk about the power and the difference and the power delivery. So the 12 valve VR6, tuned, made 172, 176 torque. Look at that torque curve. It's very, very flat, power comes on really good. Everything is great, right? Feels amazing. Oh yeah. Low end torque, it's always there, feels great, right? Right. That's what they're known for. Let's go with a stock 1AT with the tune. This graph is a little bit choppy just based on the, the uh, RPM signal we had on the dyno that day. But yeah, down at 2000 RPM, I would say the VR makes a few more torque, right? Right, maybe off the line to but w once you're at like 2300, and keep in mind, if you're racing people and stuff like that, or even going out playing, you're not starting to race at 1500 RPM. Nobody is. At a light from a dig. We didn't even dyno it because it's so far down in the RPM range. We didn't even start the dyno graph that far. But at like 2200 RPM, it, things start to change, 2300 RPM. And then already by 2500 RPM, a 1AT has made 16 more torque and 10 more horsepower. We're going to have a lot of angry people. I'm I know, right now. but then look, even still, we're talking low end power. We're only at 3,200 RPM, Clayton. 3,200. The torque is, what's that? 70 wheel torque in the difference. And horsepower? 44 wheel horsepower in the difference at only 32, 3300 RPM. Well, we're gonna get some arguments that, you know, the, the 24 valves make more power and more torque, which they do, but I don't know. It's, but we're comparing, again, we were trying to compare the most common to 
engine swaps, right? Yep. 12 valve versus 1AT. And so the difference is, is that yes, the torque comes on really hard and then falls off. But if you look at actual data here, you'll see that the horsepower and torque never fall below what the 1AT does all the way through the RPM range. So from 2200, 2300 RPM all the way to the end, it's making more power. The one difference I will say, they are torquey and you would feel lag, but the lag that you're getting, you're already further ahead in the power department. And this isn't everybody's end goal is chasing horsepower and stuff. We try to show a lot of horsepower in this channel as much as we can. So it's kind of what we focus on. So that's not going to be for everybody. But again, the reason that we started this video is because it's definitely a bit of a misconception that the car has more low end power. I guess, how low do you want to go? 1500 RPM? Yeah, maybe it has more low end torque and maybe low end horsepower. But after 2300 RPM, the 180 is like large gaps in the difference of horsepower and torque. So what you're saying is they, they never lose. They sometimes, they, they don't lose, but <laughs> sometimes they do as we showed already. Yeah. The one thing I will say about all this, I'm not leaning one way or the other really, cause there is definitely perks to each. Both Clayton and I, we go to the drag strip, we run a local circuit, our local like circuit track and stuff. I'm probably going to go towards the four cylinder just for the sheer fact of how easy they are to modify, how much power you get out of the box with them and the potential long-term, along with the bit of weight distribution and where that weight is. If we're talking about a regular cruiser, none of this really matters and why not just go with the amazing sounding VR? Am I making good points there, Clayton? I agree. The difference in power and torque with the 1AT is definitely going to be a little bit harder to manage for regular driving based on the car being so light and it having a big onslaught of torque, a lot higher than the VR. Some are gonna love that feeling. Once you get used to driving a turbo car, you know, you get a lot more comfortable, but out of the box, that may throw some people off, right? Right. Because the it's VR right. is very smooth with a turbocharger, especially a super small turbo like a KO3 that comes on them. They are very torquey, very low end power, uh, but it will make a front wheel drive lighter car feel a bit weird when you're first getting used to it. Clayton, what would be your choice? Depending on the situation, like a, for a Mark 1 track car, circuit track, which is what I do, I would say 1AT for sure. Yeah, Four this is all gonna be personal opinion. Um, for drag racing, I, I don't know, I like a VR. Yeah, I do. I, I like Kayla's car even for circuit track too. I know that's different car altogether, not one Mark one, two or three, but um, I think for the drag strip, I think personally, I would try a VR. Yeah, something, something it's, it's a good option for drag racing for sure, uh, especially with all the weight. Additionally, out front where you want it. I would say for me, I'm going to in a smaller, lighter chassis. I'm pretty much always going to choose a 1AT or a four cylinder, not specifically 1AT, but a four cylinder just for the weight and I'm a turbo guy. Oh, well, wait, let me back this up. Okay, the VR, you back it up. The VR would have to be turbo. Oh, okay. okay. <laughs> None of that. Even in a Mark II or one? No, for a drag car. Oh, for, for a drag yeah, yeah, car, I get right? you, I get oh, you. Oh, but for, for a cruiser, no, all day and a, that's, Yeah, so that's I'm, cool. I, so in that regard, if I was doing like a Caddy or a Cabby. Mark I Caddy, I would 100% I could see myself doing a VR swap in them again, but- And then, and then getting bored and boosting. I just, it. that's my problem. I know I'm gonna turbocharge it. And when you look long-term turbo wing stuff and in the long run, they're all gonna, you know, all the turbo gear to do a big turbo setup on a 1AT or a VR6, it's all very costly. Um, the one difference, I guess, is depending on how far you go, modifying a six cylinder, you have 50% more stuff. You have more pistons, more injectors, more rods, those things all add up in the cost of things. So be curious to see what you guys say in the comments below. Um, Are you surprised? Not you, but the, the people. You guys yeah, surprised? Yeah, I wonder if people didn't realize this was the difference. Now, I think even when we first started talking about this, not to ramble on too much, but I would have 
thought that a VR carried more torque. Like down low? Yep. Yeah, yeah. For yeah. longer. I, I knew the situation. I honestly thought they would cross paths in it. And again, we're not comparing stock versus it is. stock. Right there. Oh. Yeah, they do cross paths right down there. Yeah. Um, we were not talking stock versus stock because we know that people are modifying, especially if you're watching this channel, you're modifying your car. Nobody's doing a 180 swap in a car, not at least doing a tune on it. And that VR had a tune on it also. So we tried to keep them as comparable as we could and just show you the overall difference. So if you have any questions or comments, I'm rambling, ask them below. Thanks everyone for subscribing and we'll see you in the next video. Afterthought. Oh, okay. 180 VR or 2.5? Oh, I would 1000% take the 2.5 every single time. In a front wheel drive car, it's gonna feel, oh my God. Is that a 180 customer telling you that it never was? No, I'll call you back in a second. So one, one thing we kind of forgot about, sorry about the mic, we thought about this last minute. We did have a 24 valve 3.2 yeah, so caddy, right? 3.2, yes, 24 valve. Yeah, so just- It changes the game quite a bit. Yeah. When you're talking those engines, mm -hmm. the torque is very similar down low um, to the 1AT, and it makes substantially more power over at 6,000 RPM in comparison. But again, we were talking about 12 valve versus 1AT. Yeah. That's a 3.2 liter, different animal. That one was tuned also, but peak torque the 180 is still made more peak torque is still made more but not a whole lot more no. and, it was far and, off and in this case the vr did carry the torque yeah this would have been further. way out and way further for sure yeah anyway just wanted to add that in there for the people that are going to say